This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks that you have brought us safely through another night, into a new day and into a new week. And now as we begin this time of worship, may your Holy Spirit be felt within us and around us. And as we hear the words of Scripture read to us once again, may our reflections and our time together nourish us in such a way that we are better able to meet the challenges of this day and the coming week. And we ask and pray this in the name of Jesus, our Savior, who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is Matthew chapter 18, verses 5 through 20, found on page 20 in your pew Bible. 15 through 20. 15 through, isn't that what I said? What I said? Five. Five. Oh, I don't want to read that much. <laughs> <laughs> if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah, I just wanted to hope you weren't reading from the fifth verse. That's, uh... <laughs> Before we have our prayer this morning, let me just give you some updates. Uh, the uh, David uh, Jenkins' father is being buried this morning. As we are gathered here, they are gathered at the cemetery. And so we do include them in our prayers this day. Um, I know that... Um, Buzz has had a, 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 a good week and a bad week at the same time. Uh, he's, he's, of course, not moving as fast as he wants to go. They're still working with his speech and getting him up. Uh, and uh, there's some uncertainty as to, as to if he's going to remain at the place he is now. Uh, they seem to think uh, he needs a different kind of, of uh, care. But uh, uh, Stephen and... Uh, Chris, we're going to speak with the uh, facility there and, and try to get that straight. But uh, uh, continue to keep Buzz in prayer. Others you see here are those uh, the, uh, uh, in uh, the bold who, who also are in need of our prayers, those who have uh, lost loved ones. Uh, and uh, I had wondered about uh, Stanley. Um, because our lawn hadn't been done, and, and so I, I see that he is ill as well. <clears throat> Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we are grateful for your presence in our lives, and especially the presence that comes to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. We are grateful for his love, his care, the nurture that he gave and he witnessed of your presence and your healing power. 
We are grateful for your Holy Spirit that comes around us and is within us so that at moments when we find there are words needed that we have nothing to offer, it is your presence that is felt. We thank you, O oh God, for the blessings of this day and this hour and that we are able to gather here in this place. And those who are unable to gather here have gathered with us online. And together, we are your people, and we are grateful. We know that there are those in our community, and especially those on our list of prayer this day, who are in need of your healing spirit. They are in need of your comfort and your guidance. There are those within our larger community who also are in need. There are those who are now among those afflicted with the virus. There are those who are seeking healing from it. And there are those in their workplaces that are having to make harsh decisions of how they will continue or if they will be able to continue at all in doing what they have come to enjoy doing. And so gracious God, we do pray for our community and all who are in it, praying for your blessing, your guidance and your safety. We ask that you bless the hearts of those who are leaders of communities and of nations who have within them the authority to provide the leadership that is necessary to gain for us a, a, a way to of hope for today and the future. Be with those who are in the science field, in the medical field, who are constantly working on a, on a vaccine. Bless them with open minds and clearness of thought so that they will find something that has not been found before but will be found and will be effective in the struggle we have. Continue to bless us as a congregation here in the ways that we can open our doors and our hearts to serve. Bless uh, also our neighboring congregations that they too, when called upon, will be able to answer all this in your name and for your glory we ask, amen. In every woe, there is a refuge from the foe. There is a peace this world won't know. It's in his name. There is a glow in darkest night, a dawn of hope, a guiding light. There is a hell in helpless flight, it's in his name. His name is wonderful, counselor, my God. His name is Jesus, and he's ever the same. There is a calm when fear assails. There is a power all nature hails. There is a love that never fails. It's in his name. It's in his name. His name is wonderful, counselor. Mighty God, his name is Jesus, and he's ever the same. There is a calm when fear assails, there is a power all nature hails, there is a love that never fails, it's in his name. 
It's in His name. It's in His name. His precious name. Almighty and eternal God, our Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength, our rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. I read this week uh, a comment said you've got to really feel empathy for a man like Moses, who spent 40 years wandering in the desert, eating nothing but bread off the ground, an occasional bird. And every day, a million people coming up to him and saying, are we there yet? Today, numbers are part of the message, the numbers of people. Numbers, and we know in the scripture, numbers are important. We know that there are 12 tribes, of Israel. We know that Jesus chose 12 disciples. 12, it takes as a called a minion, not the cartoon characters, but a minion, uh, which is necessary for a synagogue to be established. There were 40 years in the desert. There were 40 days that uh, Jesus spent in the wilderness, 40 days in the ark. And today, Two or three are gathered. Why? Why? Numbers can be good, and we know that numbers can be misleading. We know that in the years of age of various people in the Old Testament, they pretty much lost time of, of years and how old somebody was. So to say that somebody was 500 years, they are ancient, much like I thought my third grade teacher was when I first met her. It didn't really mean anything. And the more that I look at Ancestry.com and I, I look at even, even death certificates and on it, it says, person born unknown. <laughs> and well, you knew they were born, but nobody could remember how old that person was. When planning events, we are concerned with numbers because it will make a quite a difference as to who's going to get fed and, and how we're going to do it and where the room is that we can meet and all the things that have to go into planning. We first want to know numbers. I once had a bride in, in Florida who came to me and she said, Pastor, we're, 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 our, our, our list has been scaled down to 375 guests. I go, well, you're going to have to scale it down. Oh, no, mom and dad said it's fine. I said, yes, but the church only seats at maximum 210. <laughs> Somebody's going to be standing outside. <laughs> Numbers are important. The interpreters of this passage agree that really it wasn't to set a minimum number to gather to ask, to pray. What it meant was that it should be more than just one person in the setting of the church. And this is important because if indeed, uh, uh, Patsy had read from verse five of, the, of it and had included all that's before, this whole passage has to do with not leaving people out. It talks about a lost sheep and the 99 that are left. It talks about how decisions are made, but that they should be including even those who disagree because you want to have two or more so that when you're talking about something as important as Jesus says, whatever you bind on earth is going to be bound in heaven. That's some hefty stuff. That's, that's, that's like power. And so Jesus is just telling them sort of, I know you. <laughs> Don't just select the leader and say it's up to them. You need two or more. Yes, we can all pray. 
Hopefully we're all guided by the Holy Spirit. But even in our workings today in the modern church, in ours, what do we value so much is our congregational background. Everybody gets a vote. And we pray that everybody has made a commitment to, to really look at an issue as how does it affect our church? How does it affect the worshipers? How does it affect the ministry beyond? And so Jesus is really preparing his disciples for what's to come when he's not there. And that each person gathered is to be mindful that theirs is going to be the voice of the one who trained them. They are going to be the representatives. Or as Paul says, he calls us ambassadors for Christ. Numbers are important because it's in unity that we need to seek consensus. You, you may have been involved in some uh, vote in a club or maybe in the church where, where it was like the vote was, uh, you know, 51 to 50. And, and you and I hopefully know that's not a win. <laughs> that's not a win. And the win would be more in which Jesus said, let's, let's think about this. Don't leave the one sheep, though you have the 99. How can we do even better than what we might otherwise do? So numbers are important. Names are also important in this passage. And if you remember from the very beginnings back in, uh, in uh, Advent of, of the year in the Bible, and we have the angel of the Lord revealing, and his name shall be Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now, I was listening to a comedian recently, and, and she was, well, I don't know if it was really a comedian. I think it was on the new thing that I've gotten on the radio, and NPR, where people tell stories. They're, they're storytellers, and it's really been interesting to hear about their lives and stuff. But it was an older woman. She was a, a grandmother, a great-grandmother. Anyway, she was talking about the struggles of her life. And when she got the news that uh, her newest grandchild was born, and she asked the question, what's the name that you're giving? And it was something like Catherine. And she was so relieved it was something she could spell. <laughs> She just, she just said, I know my children and my grandchildren want to be creative, but I'm of a different generation. Names are important. And they are. They were. I remember a big dictionary that my mom had when we were growing up on, the, uh, under the, on a shelf. And I, I mean, it was one of those hefty library dictionaries. I'm not sure how much we used it, but in the back of it, there were listings of names and what names meant. And it was one of the most interesting things to read. So that if you were named Samuel, called of God, Reuben is the leader. And, uh, and different things, different names mean different things. Names are important. And it is in this because with the name, it gives legitimacy. That legitimacy that when you ask in his name it will be done by his father in heaven it gives legitimacy i don't know about you who who watch the the antique road show even and 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 you if, if you're like me you're just like oh wow wow that is pretty that is pretty but it's got to be a fake it's got to be a fake they're trying you can tell they're, they're trying to slowly get over and they'll say well you know if it really was carried by a Confederate soldier, it would have this. <laughs> and then you know it's coming. What grandma told you about that sword is not true. <laughs> the real kicker is this belonged to a Union soldier, but that's another thing, you know. The, the, the thing is they're hoping that Tiffany will have inscribed in the way that Tiffany's supposed to be inscribed to make it valuable. I go online and I see these yard sales because I am just waiting to find that one painting that has a, a name on it that they're selling for five bucks that I can just make millions off of. I've waited for years. It's not happening quickly. But names are important. We look for names. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Philippi, about the identity of Jesus and that it was so connected to what we are doing. He said, therefore, God also has highly exalted him 
and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, and those in heaven, and those on earth, and those under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. We are supposed to be so connected that we're not doing something that God does not want us to do, which leads us back to that second time that Jesus says, I give you the power to bind and to loose. We do it in his name. It's his reputation that's at stake. And when I think about that, I also go back again to Moses in Exodus, where they have crossed the, the sea and are getting ready to cross the, the Red Sea. And, and they get out there and they go a little further and the people are complaining. And Jesus goes back to God and says, you know, God, how will it look to the Egyptians for you to let us die? <laughs> how will it look to you? It's such a, you know, God, we're talking one-on-one -on -one here. How would it look to you? You know, what, what kind of stamp of approval? And, and Moses wanted this stamp of approval because it's hard to be faithful in tough times if you don't know why you're doing it and who you're doing it with and who you're doing it for. In his name, in his name. So numbers are important in this passage and, and the name is important, but more or less this whole chapter, this whole part of this, of Matthew's gospel, has to do with the nurturing aspect of the church. The nurturing aspect of the church. You see, we can rebuke, we can recognize what we see is wrong, whether it's called sin or whatever you want to call it, we can rebuke because everybody has a different way of living and different understanding. And, and again, part of the congregational way is live and let live. <laughs> But we do have these moments where we just, that's just not right. Just not right. But the response to that is not to cut off discussion. The response to that is not to, to, to rebuke in such a way that it's a hurtful thing. For even when Jesus rebuked Jesus, uh, Peter, and he did say, get thee behind me, Satan, he didn't take his love away. He didn't withdraw his presence from him. Instead, with his rebuke came a blessing. He assured that there was some goodness still in Peter. Peter just didn't recognize it. He, didn't rec he, he was wrong. Simple as that. And so, what we bind and what we loose on earth is really a reflection of the trust of Christ to share such responsibilities with us that we are involved in what God has planned, that we are active in it. And so we seek to have actions that are consistent with those that he had. So when he says, now, if, if, uh, if it comes to it, you, you, you know, you, you, the Jews and, or the Gentiles and the tax collectors treat, treat them as you would treat them, doesn't mean you, you, you walk by them and just as if they're non-persons. Because Jesus ate with those folks. It says, just don't give up on those folks. They don't see the light yet. They don't see the presence. They might have heard the rebuke, but they haven't heard the blessing yet. Don't stop halfway. And finally, the most important part of this passage, when you've done, when you've looked at the numbers and the names and the way it's nurturing, then, then what is it really, the message here, that God be God, that God be the judge, and the gathered faithful people were the guides, not the judge, but we are the guides when we do it in his name. And if we're guiding, then the response is, whatever you ask, it will be done. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, in the world in which we live, it is, seems like it's a great challenge to us. There are many who are still fearful for going outside or going to places where they have been used to going. 
And there are those who do go out, but there's a, a certain hindrance in their lives. It's just a different world we're living in at the moment. And you know it. And we are most grateful that you're walking with us through this time. Help us that in our faithfulness, that our lives also exhibit the care that you would exhibit to those in the days in which your son lived. Help us to be that same image of care. So that although there are those who rebuke, help us to be those who guide into a blessedness, into a way where people feel safe and they can understand that even through the hardest days, we are not alone. Help us then to be your witnesses as we walk day by day, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And now I invite you, those who are present, to stand if you're able and receive the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us this day and forevermore. Amen. And may you have a blessed week.